everybody, I'm Steve from Malaysian Forge, a LARP weapon manufacturer specializing in curved swords. So I'm going to do a video today about uh, sword physics. It'll just be hopefully a fairly quick crash course in sword physics for straight swords, and then I'll move on to the physics of curved swords and how they're different. Okay, so they're basically a few quantities that you really need to to know to figure out the, the physics of a sword. The first one is the weight or the mass. So uh, people kind of feel like they know what that is already, mass, you know, how heavy is it? But it's also the quantity of inertia, so how difficult is it to start it moving or stop it moving? We're talking about essentially Newtonian physics here. So an object in motion will remain at motion unless acted upon by an external force, or an object at rest will retain, remain at rest. That's basically what we're talking about. You want to start the thing moving, how difficult is it to, to start pushing it, and if you want to stop it, how difficult is it to stop. The next quantity, I guess, is, uh, is where that weight is applied, so the point of balance here, or, or center of mass. So in this case, it's about, what, six inches from the guard or so. So this is a LARP sword, but that's actually about right for a sword that's just kind of modeled off, a medieval arming sword. So people talk about a sword having good balance, and they look at it and go, ah, oh, well, the, the point of balance is a little bit closer, therefore it has good balance. So that is important, but there's also another quantity that I'll talk about in a sec. But the balance point is important essentially for the feeling of weight in your hand. So I talk about mass. Well, the mass is sort of not actually that important for the feeling of weight. If a sword is, is fairly heavy, I mean, even even a real sword, not a lap sword, but even a real sword, they're not that heavy. If they're centered, if the mass is sort of centered around your hand, it's pretty easy to carry like this. So the main thing that's going to make it feel heavy is the center of balance, center of mass. So if the center of mass is sort of closer to the hilt, it's not going to really feel very heavy. If it's far away, it's going to, it's going to really want to pull forward, right? So it's, uh, it's going to feel, it's going to make these muscles in the hand work really, really hard to kind of pull the thing, pull the thing back. So that's the main reason why the point of balance um, kind of matters for the feeling of weight. It also sort of matters for, um, you know, how, how, how well it can chop, I suppose. But that also comes into my next point, which is moment of inertia. So if mass is the quantity of inertia in a straight line, or how difficult is it to start moving? Moment of inertia, which is a technical quantity, uh, the technical name for it, sorry. It's basically how difficult is it to start it rotating or stop it from rotating. So personally, I like the term rotational inertia a little bit more than moment of inertia, even though that's kind of the more accepted term. It's a little bit of an older term. It's not as descriptive. So rotational inertia, or RI, I prefer personally. So you might think, okay, well, I actually want a low moment of inertia, so then it's you know quicker to move the thing around, it's quicker to change direction, start it rotating, or whatever. And that's true, but if you want to chop, you actually want a higher moment of inertia because, you know, it's, if it's harder to start, it's also harder to stop. If it's harder to stop, then you don't want to be in the way of it, essentially. You know, it's going to be, uh, it's going to want to keep going through its target. So you want to play with those quantities so that you get the result that you want. There's no right answer necessarily, it's just, you know, what you, what you actually want out of it. So there's another quantity, which is the center of percussion. So you can actually calculate that if you have the weight and if you have the center of balance. And if you have the moment of inertia, you, you can calculate from that where the center of percussion is. And conversely, if you have the center of percussion and the weight and the center of balance, you can calculate the moment of inertia, which is very useful. So the center of percussion is basically the point around which the sword's going to move. You might think it's the center of balance, but it's not. In uh, rigid mechanics, there's um, the rigid body mechanics, the, this, this extra quantity center of balance is basically where it's going to move. It's calculated around where you're applying force. So it's not calculated around the center of balance. You get to choose where you put the force. So if I'm holding it here, a uh, single-handed sword, usually you calculate from about there where my fingers are kind of gripping it. Uh, and the way you figure it out is if you just kind of waggle the sword around, you're going to find that there's a point where it doesn't really move. So there's, there's that. Uh, there's that point here for this one. It's about, it's about here. If I were holding it in a different spot, so for example, if I had a two-handed sword and I was holding it down near the pommel, and I move that, well, it would have a, a separate, a different center of percussion for that point. In the case of this arming sword, it's about here. Uh, that's fine. In the case of this, which is, a, 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 I guess, a palash, this is an eldritch. I, I can't remember what they call it, a medieval back sword, I think. Uh, we kind of call it a palash. It's kind of more rapier-like in its qualities. So its center of percussion is much further up on the blade in proportion to the length of this thing. And in fact for rapiers, for example, which is sort of uh, 
fairly similar to what this weapon is. The point of the center of percussion, it doesn't have to be inside the blade, it can actually be off the end, which for a rapier is ideal because it's such a thrust focused weapon. If I put the center of mass, or center of percussion, sorry, inside my opponent, well, anywhere that I move that sword, it's going to stay on line, right? Anywhere that I move my hand, it's going to mean that any thrust will go right through that center of percussion, which is kind of cool. Additionally, for a rapier, I think because they're so long, their, center, their moment of inertia is quite high, so it's fairly hard to actually uh, push them offline because it takes so much to make them rotate. So it really is the perfect combination for a thrust-centric weapon. The other useful thing about uh, the center of percussion is it sort of defines where the sweet spot is. If I, uh, if I hit uh, below the center of percussion, so center of percussion is about here, if I hit about here, it's going to hit there and it's, the center of percussion is going to want to keep going in that direction, which basically means that it's going to rotate the sword like this um, and it's going to push up into my hand, so there will be a reaction force pushing up that way. Uh, and conversely, if I hit well above the center of percussion, I'll hit and then the, the sword will kind of, the center of percussion will want to keep going that way and it'll pull on my hand, so it'll have a reaction force that pulls like this. Uh, either way, it's going to sort of want to vibrate and move around and it's going to have a bit of a reaction force and not be very comfortable. And apparently it also means for especially European swords, the cut's not very effective. Um, so for European swords, they're kind of, uh, apparently, um, they really need to connect at the sweet spot, at the center of percussion, to get a good cut. Um, I don't remember if it was Shadowversity or uh, Scholar Gladiatorium. I like both of those guys, I think they're great. Um, they suggested that, for example, the Katana uh, was a little bit more forgiving in that sense. That it didn't really matter too much if you weren't exactly on the center of percussion, you're a little bit behind it, a little bit in, ahead of it. Um, which is, I think, another advantage of curved swords the center of percussion sort of here, you connect and then you'll just kind of keep slicing through. Um, eventually it's kind of going to, going to go roughly through the center of percussion anyway. So that's an interesting um, advantage of, of potentially an advantage of um, curved swords over straight swords. So let's take a bit of a look at that. I'll just do a little bit of a drawing so uh, you can see what I'm talking about. Alright, so for a, a straight sword, cross cut there, so you're going to have a center of mass somewhere around there. We're calculating the center of percussion based on uh, the kind of input from about here. It's going to be online. It's going to be inside the sword, about there, about what two thirds maybe up the blade for something that looks like this. For a rapier, it might be a little bit different. Your um, your center of mass is going to be a little bit closer to the hilt, I think still going to be probably calculated around here and the center of percussion could be you know up here or maybe here you know somewhere much further up along the blade uh, so the center of percussion and the center of mass are actually inside the blade for straight swords so this is where we start to see the difference between curved and straight swords so for a uh, curved sword the center of mass isn't necessarily inside the blade in fact in this case so let's find let's find where its balance point is along its blade so about about there. And you can see if I kind of grab it anywhere else, then the center of mass is going to be in line, in a straight line from here down towards the earth. So I think the center of uh, the, the balance point was about here, and I can see that the line makes it a center of balance right about here, so outside the blade, behind the blade. So that's really interesting. So it should be about here, I think. So let's give that a bit of a draw. Here's our sham shear. There's the line where my handle's pointing. There's the curve of the blade, like that. If you can see that. So the center of mass is about here. So if I'm calculating uh, where my center of percussion is using this is a kind of input, well, it's going to be along that line there somewhere. So the center of percussion is going to be somewhere around here, so well behind the blade. I can't really feel where that is, but I guess it's about there for this particular, this particular blade. Um, so a couple of interesting things. Firstly, if I start to sort of swing that sword, it's gonna it's gonna feel, if you like, the way uh, if I you know were to close my eyes, it's gonna feel like the blade is sort of about here or so. Um, but the blade is actually a little bit forward of where it sort of feels like it is in my hand. Um, so I think this is uh, sort of uh, an advantage for cutting. I think so. It's like if you uh, in boxing, you're told to punch through the opponent's head. It's not uh, you don't you don't aim to to land the punch on their head, you, you aim to, to punch behind. So what that basically means is that the point at which you're pointing, you're putting the maximum force into your punch 
is where you actually connect because you're sort of expecting to actually keep going through their, through their face. Um, for swords, for a straight sword, you can kind of imagine trying to hit and you can, you can kind of imagine that it will hit right right there, you know, you can hit exactly at the point where it sort of feels like the center of mass is because it's inside the blade. So we'll, we'll kind of aim and then aim to hit like that. So you'd have to put in a bit of effort, if you like, to train yourself to be aiming through your opponent, just like, the, just like in boxing. You get a little bit of an advantage with curved swords because uh, the center of mass where it feels like uh, the blade is, is kind of about here or so, and the center of percussion is about here. So the blade's going to connect before it feels like it should. So you get that little bit of extra, uh, you know, hit a little bit extra early compared to what you think it's going to. So you get a little bit of assistance, actually getting a bit of a better cut with that. Um, the other thing is because it's sort of offline, because the center of mass is a little bit offline, um, that will tend to align the edge sort of automatically if you like. You try, try to come in like this, center of mass is here, it's going to want to kind of pull itself so that it's dragging behind where I'm pushing the blade. So it tends to align it. Um, which I think is another advantage of, uh, of curved swords. So there's another kind of interesting curved blade that we make as well uh, at Elysian Forge, and that is the Egyptian Kopesh. So you can kind of see uh, it's, it's not like the other curved swords, it's not curving backwards, the center of mass isn't going to be behind the blade, it's actually going to be in front of the blade, it's more like an axe in that respect. So the center of mass is going to be probably about here, I guess. So what that means is that it kind of, it, it wants to pull forward, it's like an axe, it kind of feels like it, it, wants, to, it wants to go forward. Um, which is pretty interesting. So you can kind of see if I draw that. Center of mass is going to be there. But again, uh, unlike the straight swords, the point at which the, the blade connects first is going to be well ahead. It's going to be well ahead of where it sort of feels like the sword should connect. It's going to be hitting before, before it feels like the, the center of mass should. So it'll have that extra little bit of a kick, if you like, I think. Um, and then, uh, supposedly with these weapons, you know, I mean, uh, at that time there wasn't very much in the way of armor. Um, so you kind of hit, hit there and the thing would kind of slide through, slice like that. Which, um, yeah, seems pretty, really quite devastating, I think. Alright, so there we go. So there's a, a little bit of a talk on physics. So for me, I have an engineering background. I've studied a lot of physics. Uh, physics for swords just kind of fascinates me. I really love it. And as a manufacturer, this stuff is really interesting and useful for us. So we try to figure out how how a sword is, how we kind of want it to feel, and how how to actually achieve the qualities that we want. So the right con, uh, right combination, I guess, of uh, point of balance, uh, center of percussion, and moment of inertia to kind of make the whole thing feel feel right. Essentially, you know, how easy to stop swinging, whatever. So each of us have different qualities, like for example a sham shear is um, quite quick, it doesn't have a very high moment of inertia because it's quite a slender blade. That's really interesting, a lot of people really love the feel of that, and especially compared to something like that, like a cavalry sabre for example, which has a point of balance, a center of balance, it's a, a lot further along the blade, and a higher, higher moment of inertia which really makes it, it feel like it really wants to chop, uh, which is just right for a cavalry sabre. So that's it for the basics of sword physics on this video. We as a manufacturer plan to post quantities that I mentioned already, so things like the uh, point of balance, the weight, the moment of inertia and the center of percussion for all of our swords. Hopefully other manufacturers get on the bandwagon and start doing that too, so it's easier to compare between them. And uh, everybody will start to get a feel for what those numbers mean and then how, how the sword is going to feel before they even buy it. If you're interested in knowing more about sword physics, I'll post some links in the description. There's a website called Ensis Sub Kalo, which does amazing work describing the physics of swords, and some YouTube channels uh, I really like, Scalagrim, Scholar, Scholar Gladiatoria, Shadowversity, and Knight Errant especially did a, a long video series on sword physics as well. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed.